Hey, welcome back. It's Laure and today we are asking ourselves if photons truly exist. And beware, this video gets stranger and more fascinating as we get deeper into details. In science, we have strong experimental evidence that atoms and the electromagnetic field exchange energy in discrete quantitized chunks of energy. We can call these chunks photons, which means that the short answer to our question is yes, photons exist. But we aren't really interested in energy transfer. We think of photons as these little balls of light rushing through space at the velocity of light. We think of photons as these little objects that occasionally react as a wave and not a particle. And in this framework, the answer to the question of the existence of photons is more complicated. See, in science, we typically study photons by starting with a wave equation of a free particle. We can calculate the wave function of a free particle by following Schrödinger's equation. We do the math and we find an object that looks like a wave and that definitively does not look like a particle, even though that we are studying a free particle. And at this point, we are advised to build a wave packet, which is a group of waves traveling together looking like a dense packet. This packet looks a lot more localized, but it's not clear how we can jump from the sum of waves to one physical particle. And here's the truth. Non-relativistic quantum mechanics doesn't tell us where particles come from or why they exist, let alone why photons exist. For this, we need quantum field theory to get the reasons for the existence of particles, but these reasons also show us that particles, these building blocks of physics, are stranger things than we thought. Quantum field theory is a combination of classical field theory, special relativity, and quantum mechanics that is used specifically to study particles, subatomic particles, and quasi-particles. And in quantum field theory, we consider the underlying quantum field of a particle to study its behavior. And we treat particles as the excited states, or quanta, of these fields. Just like the chunks that we described at the beginning to quantify how energy is transferred from an electromagnetic field to an atom. In quantum field theory, particles are defined for Fock states, which are the excited states of a scalar free field. A particle can be added to a state, for example from a vacuum state, with a creation operator that adds a chunk of energy. Because we add and remove particles from a field using operator, the properties of the particles actually are properties of the quantum field. So the mass, spin, or the charge of a particle depend on the quantum field itself and not on the particle. This explains why all particles are identical. They are all created by the same field, so their properties must be the same. Today, quantum field theory is a definitive theory for describing what particles are and how they behave. But the Fock states only exist for a free field, which is useless for photons and protons that interact strongly. And the truth is, we do not know what the states of interacting particles are. We can only approximate the properties. And in the case of photons, we cannot quantize the electromagnetic field directly, but we can quantize a field called the electromagnetic four potential field. It's a generalized field from which the electromagnetic field can be derived. For a given gauge and in a given frame of reference, the electrical scalar potential is one component and the magnetic vector potential makes up the other three components. We can define photons as a quantized state of the generalized electromagnetic four potential field, but they still aren't little balls of light or even rays of light. And that's why the Nobel Prize winner Willis Eugène Lamb wrote a paper called Antiphoton, arguing against photons. He explains that photons are a bit like our old concept of the ether or the vacuum. In his view, there is no such thing as a photon, only a comedy of errors on optical scientists. This idea of photons is very convenient to explain when energy is exchanged between light and an atom, but it leads many people to think of light as a pack of little particles rushing through space, when in reality light is a type of radiation and we only see photons during interactions. If you learned something today, please give this video a like, and if you would like to know more, I invite you to watch another video on my channel.